Hey, Tim Schetz here again with C4D Training. Today I have a tutorial for you on lighting. This is going to be a multi-part tutorial as there's a lot to cover for lighting. So let's go ahead and get started. Currently here in my scene, I just have a plane and I'm just using that as a floor so we have something for our lights to reflect on. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select light and pull that up a little bit so we can see. And if I just do a quick render, there we are, we're lighting our scene, nothing terribly interesting. If I click on my light down here in the Attributes Manager, I have a lot of options. We have our usual basic and coordinate tabs. And the one we're gonna start with here is the General tab. And under the General tab, we can change our color, the intensity of our light, the type of our light, the type of our shadow, whether or not our light is visible, and then we have some other options down here that we'll go over in a few minutes. So by default, our light type is set to Omni, the intensity is set to 100, and the color is set to white. I don't know about you, but it's very rare to actually see white, pure white light. So I always tell my students that they should add a little bit of color to that. It doesn't have to be crazy. You know, if we come over here to kind of the yellowy orange color and we just add just a hair of color. It's nothing significant. It's not really, really, really bright yellow or orange or anything, just a little bit of color. We hit OK. And now we have this kind of more natural looking light shining on our surface. I can change the intensity. And as you can see, I, I, it updates in my scene here. And then we can change the light type. Like I said, Omni type is the type that comes in by default. We also can choose a spotlight. And as you can see, now we have this little cone. And I'm going to rotate this so that it's pointing down. And now if I render my scene, I have a little spotlight. OK, so we'll come back up here, select my light. So we can also add some shadow. So by default, shadow is set to none. And we have several choices here. We have obviously none. Shadow Map Soft, Ray Traced Hard, and Arius Shadows. Shadow Maps Soft will render the fastest, and they look pretty nice. Then Ray Traced Hard takes a little bit longer, and then Area Lights take the longest. So we're going to go ahead and set ours for now to Shadow Map Soft. All right, so to go ahead and demonstrate some of these Shadow Maps, I'm going to go ahead and put in a cube. Go ahead and resize this guy. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. So I have my cube floating a little bit off the ground. And so if I go ahead and render this, we can see kind of a soft edge shadow here on the ground. If I go ahead to my light and I change that to hard, we go ahead and render that. We get a much harder edge on our shadow. And again, if I change this to area, and we render that off, see it takes a little longer. And notice how diffused the shadow is. It makes for very realistic shadows, but it takes significantly longer to render. So if you're doing a large scene, you want to be careful about using the area shadow, but it does look really good. So I'm going to go ahead and change my shadow back to soft. And we're going to go over visible light now. So by default, it comes in as none. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to visible. And we'll go ahead and do a render. And you can see we get this kind of like cone of light, which is really nice looking. And it shines on the cube and casts a shadow, but the light kind of goes through the, the cube. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. If we go ahead and change this from visible to volumetric, and now I render, we can see that the cube is kind of cutting out the light here underneath. And so you kind of get these light rays going around the cube as opposed to this being filled in and everything being even. And now if we go ahead and change this from volumetric to inverse volumetric and I render it, now you see we don't see the light coming down. We just see the light underneath kind of where the cube is cutting out the light, so that's why it's inverse volumetric. This is really great if you have an object with maybe a light in it and the object has holes. You can put 
a light inside that object, turn the visible light to inverse volumetric and you'll have these rays coming out of the object. And it's actually a very cool look. All right, so if I switch back to my light here, the checkbox is down here at the bottom. Generally, leaving them as default is fine. There are situations when you would want to change those, but for now, we'll just go ahead and leave them. Okay, so a couple of other types of light. So we've covered Omni and Spot. There's also the infinite light. An infinite light acts like the sun. It's a, a very distant light source. Then we have an area light. When you use an area light, the light rays expand in every direction from its surface, kind of like a computer monitor. So you'd have a rectangle with light kind of emanating from it. We also have the square spot, which is very similar to a spotlight. Rather than having a round cone, it's actually a square shape, hence the name square spot. We also have a parallel light. A parallel light has an origin and radiates light in one direction. By default, that direction is along the z-axis, and anything behind the parallel light will not be illuminated in your scene. We also have a parallel spot in which the light comes down in more of a cylinder shape as opposed to a cone. We also have the square parallel spot, in which case the light comes down in kind of more of a cubic shape. That's it for this section. We will continue lighting in part two. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Schetz, C4D Training. Thank you.